Hi, Eric Davidson here, uh, Crash Enterprises. Been uh, rebuilding uh, Muncie and Borg Winter transmissions for the last 35 plus years. Uh, today we're gonna be reassembling a 1970 Z28 Hurst OEM shifter. Uh, if you had watched me on my previous video of the disassembly of that Hurst shifter, now we're, uh, it's, everything is back from plating chrome plating and zinc plating, and we're gonna start reassembling with all the uh, new parts and stuff. Uh, first, I wanted to show you something. Uh, this is a fixture that I've made uh, over the years, uh, trying to wrestle with these things on a vise. Um, this is what I'm, I've made that the, the carrier fits into and you hold it. It's got a hole where you drive out the roll pins. Uh, the other thing is holding it to put in the bias spring for reverse and the washer and the little arrow and stuff. Uh, it just, it makes life so much easier with this fixture. Um, the other thing I did make also, uh, I made a tool to compress the uh, bias spring. Um, and I, I never put the handle on it. And then all of a sudden, you know, I was doing a bunch of shifters and I was like, wow, this is, you know, so then I thought, well, you know what, I'll just put a, a bolt in there. And now you can uh, compress the spring. And uh, so when you use the fixture, you have to have a, a, the hole down here because it goes through, through the hole as part of the arrangement. So you've gotta, you've gotta have that hole there also. So that, that works out. Um, the other part of the, of the tool is you compress it and then you, you just get yourself a, you know, a decent quality putty knife um, and you slide, that, you slide that in and that will keep the spring in place and then you can lever the tool down and slide, which compresses the spring a little bit more. You can slide the spring in place. Uh, now you've got, you, you, you do that without, without the tool in place, but you lever it down, you put the spring in, then you've got to put the tool back in, as you'll see when I, when I put the shifter back together, you've got to put the tool back in so that it, it keeps the spring and the, uh, the washer in place, and you pull that out, then you pull your tool out, your spring, your washer in place, and then you can take your detent plunger and put that back in place just like it is and uh, you know but uh, you'll see that real quick here um, so that's what we do the other tool I made was a tool it, you get the cheapest putty knife you can find the most flexible and what that's used for is there's a there's a tab on the shifter that the insulator has a little piece of stainless steel that springs into, and it's always on the driver's side. So that, you know, people show you putting it on both sides. Well, the, the tab, even with the Pontiacs and the Oldsmobiles and the Buicks, uh, you know, are, they're all on, on the driver's side. So you slide that in and that pushes the stainless steel tab away, and then you can pull the handle out of it. Um, and that's, but you know, something like that, you gotta, but you gotta cut it down so that it's like, it's, it's the width of the handle itself. So, but, uh, and there's our new handle back from Chrome. So, so those are some of the tools that facilitate doing this job. And so now, here we go. So now you've got to take, you've got your, your spring, you gotta have your little wave washer. So we got a brand new wave washer. We've got a brand new friction washer. Uh, we've got a replated washer for holding the detents and all that. And a replated bow tie and a new pivot pin. So here we go. So the best, first thing to do is you've got to glue in the wave washer and you want the wave to arc this way when it's in, in the mechanism. So 
then you got your spring. And sometimes what you do is you just slide it in on an angle. And you get it caught. Like that. So that pretty much puts it in place. Now sometimes the little wave washer jumps out of place. So. punch as a lineup tool. So now you can put your pivot pin in. Now the pivot pin is a carriage bolt, so you've got the four corners that you've got to line up. And Sometimes it's just a matter of giving it a little tiny twist and a tap, and back in place it goes. So with a new shifter, everything is dry, so you want to put some lube on there so everything will slide right. Um, you want to put your bow tie on. I don't know, I'm not sure what it's actually called, but it kind of kind of looks like a bow tie. It's kind of a little silly thing. But it's a necessary piece because it keeps everything centered. And if it's not centered, then it's not going to work. So to keep everything while you're assembling in place, but you can't actually engage the bow tie, you put the, the nut on, give it a couple of threads. So now we are going to... Put in the, uh, <clears throat> the reverse bias spring and washer and plunger. So we'll use the tool. Got the spring. Install the spring. So now you've got the spring captive. Now you can slide in the, the washer. And before you take out the, the putty knife, you got to put the tool back in so that everything stays in place. So, I'm going to pull out the putty knife, pull out the tool, and now you can put the plunger in. Now, another thing what you do is you got to, because there's things that move in here also, so you got to lube all that up, and then I lube up the plunger. <clears throat> the easiest way to do this, sometimes you want to go straight in, but what you got to do is you got to get it in and you give it a half a turn. And what that does is that <coughs> makes everything so that it fits in place. It centers the spring and everything. Sometimes it won't hit the slot right. So you've got to
detent spring and plunger are in place. So now we've got to put in the selector pin. the selector pin and you got a you got a lever over everything and then it slides in basically just like that but you've got your holes for your roll pins to go go into and then you got your new roll pins with the kit and everything so and again being that everything is dry right now being newly rebuilt lube on there, lube up the selector pin, actually try to get some lube into the holes so that the, the roll pins will be easier to slide into. So start your roll pins. Now the roll pins need to actually be lower than the carrier. So the best thing to do is there's actually what's called a roll pin driver. It's a punch, but it's got a little ball on it that fits into the center tube of the roll pin itself. So now you can adjust to make sure that all your roll pins are down below the area of the, uh, the carrier. So, and there it is. So there's your assembled carrier and everything uh, ready to go. So now I <clears throat> actually made another tool. Uh, actually, it's you called it a fixture. Uh, like with this shifter body and everything, it's offset. So if you lay it on the table, it lays funny. So what you want to do is, uh, you know, you begin to get a block of wood. I do so many shifters. I actually made this so that you can actually just put the body down on there. The receiver sticks out beyond, so it's not interfering with anything. So now you've got, you've got to put all your arms and your plates and everything. So the first thing you got to do is you've got, a, you've got the three shims that have to go in place. So the first one is the, is the thin one. Um, and there's a little bit of a detent here, a little, a little cutout that's not in that one. So the whole thing is, this is the first one because when the bow tie is in place, there's interference. So you have to use that one first. Um, and it's the, the skinnier one. Uh, so the whole, th and again, you know, everything's, you know, new, plated, uh, dry. So we gotta make sure everything is lubricated so that everything is gonna slide nice and shift like we all want it to slide and shift. Okay, so now you got the reverse arm that goes on. everything again so that so that one goes down at this point I like to get with the selector pin the kind of the mushroom part that slides between all of these 
this is the perfect opportunity to make sure everything is lubricated properly. Now you gotta put the thicker shim on. Now with this one, there's also another little problem, not a problem, but a, a little detail. As you, as you see the, the bottom of the arc, this one's got a notch on it. The notch goes to the rear. If you put it on like this, the uh, you have to have the notch so that you can put on your back plate. And that's the whole thing. If you don't have the notch, the back plate won't go on. It will, you will be able to do it, you know, both ways, but you won't get the back plate on, on the body. So let's get all that lubed up. So now you've got the, the one, two arm. I'm gonna lubricate that. You got the three, four. And what you might do if you're going to do this at home and you've not done a lot of shifters, you might take a picture of the shifter itself because of the orientation of the offsets between the, di the different arms. And the whole thing is you can assemble these wrong and then all of a sudden you've got to Oops, you get it all together and like and bolt it up to the car. And the next thing you know, you can't, you can't do anything with it. So, and that's that. And then last part is your, your friction plate or your, uh, it's kind of an anti-rattle, takes up slack. It's basically, it's, it's, it's wavy. Um, I don't know, I like to actually give it, it's because it's, it's just a piece of stainless steel is I like to just give it a little bit more wave than started with just to, just because I kind of like to do that um, and there it is now you've got your shifter body and that's all back from from plating and looking looking nice but again now this plate is gonna is gonna go up into here and you can I don't know if you can see it but this has got a little bit of a corrosion there um, what I like to do is uh, smear on some lube, some grease, um, and what that'll do is that'll keep any rust or anything from forming now that it's, it's back together. Um, and you want to get, again, lubed up around where the carrier is going to rotate. And you got your pin, so so now I'm going to take this off, I'm going to slide all of this together, and as you can see, the bow tie has to be out of the way, otherwise uh, it won't slide in like this. So what you want. What I do is if you get a number two Phillips screwdriver, it's quarter inch shank, just like the quarter inch lineup tool is for your uh, neutral gate when you're setting the shifter up. So now I pull that out, you've got the other plug here, it slides in, everything is in place. So what you wanna do is just got a little screwdriver and kind of center all the plates together. And then 
again, you lube everything up. place. And now we've got the end plate, but part of the end plate is you have you got your end plate, but there's also what's called an anti-rattle plate. And there's a little hole there, and there's a pierced hole here that has just a little bit of nubbin sticking up. And you, they that's how it locates to stay in place. Um, assembling it, it'll fall out of place every time. So again, you kind of use a little bit of lube, a little grease to glue it into place as we... Now it's in there. Go. Now it's in place. Now, last but not least, we can put the bow tie in and tighten that up. You got to get your dust cover in because it's going to be a street shifter so you're going to have all kinds of contaminants and junk right around on the street so there's your completed shifter body and then there's your handle so now you've got a, a rebuilt shifter This looks just like the other shifter from before. So, and that's how it's done. Thank you.